Greetings, geeks. Welcome to Geeks in Space. Welcome, Jake. Uh, I, this is episode 382. I'm Rob Commander Taco Malda. And with me today, I have a bunch of gentlemen. I'm a oh, big fat liar. My YouTube is not I think streaming. You have there we go. Three with you, and that's a few, not a bunch. Can we all agree a few equals three? Wait. Hold on. The streaming thingy is broken. Let me see if it's. We are trying this again. Welcome to Geeks in Space. I am Rob Commander Taco Malda, and with me today are a fine <laughs> gaggle of gentlemen, a group of Harder. geeks. Wait, is that the intro for us to talk about the Goose game? Yeah, right? You do you, man. I'm Chris DeBona. Hello. I'm Rob I'm... Roseboom, and I don't want to know about the Goose game. Oh, you are going to know oh, about no, the Goose game. Right up your alley, man. I'm Jeff Bates. And, yeah, the Goose game. We should game. all say hi to Jake. Hi, Jake. Hi, Jake. I, I like to say hi to Jake at the end. Oh, okay, that's fair. Yeah. Make him really make him earn it by watching the whole thing and well, I mean, you know, I mean, we I, don't want to make it's not the Jake show. It's Geeks in Space, right? It's, it's Jake oh, Ball. we're verified oh. for, for realsies again. What? Oh, we're verified. Yeah, really? I got an email that said that after the entire internet threw a gigantic tantrum hissy fit <laughs> at YouTube <laughs> for taking away their verified thingy, that everybody well, that is verified, verified may verify. I thought we weren't verified in the first place. I think you have to have like a hundred thousand hours viewed or some crap like that. No, oh, I don't. I don't know. I thought we were because I thought we had to be verified in order to use the streamy thing. Hey, but no, no, no. That's different. We had to be uh, turned on for monetization to turn on real time streaming. I, oh yeah. I also have to be turned on for monetization. That's true. <laughs> I thought it was monetization turned you on. And and I'm just always streaming. <laughs> So. <laughs> ABS, always be streaming. Yeah. It's true. Whenever we're fishing uh, or like yeah. out at a bar or something, you're all like, smash my subscribe button. <laughs> it's problematic. <laughs> I like and subscribe this logger. <laughs> also, uh, join my Patreon. <laughs> you know, we should really like take the audio copy of this and put it on a podcast, like on SoundCloud. Absolutely. I was just trying to figure out how to do that. It can't be hard. I've got all the source files for the last... But I know Jeff lost a few of the episodes, but... You can we'll miss... take across the files and dump the stuff to MP3. And just then we to be them. clear, I didn't lose the episodes of Geek in Space. I have put them into a vault on the <laughs> dark side of the moon so that they will be ready when civilization is ready to hear the wisdom. That we so it's like how Disney used to put all their uh, animated features in the vault... Oh, well, yeah, it's the same vault. I've been renting space to Disney for years. <laughs> You're in between except, Harry Potter's vault and Gringle Vault? Except we don't have Walt Disney's frozen head. All right. Well, it was actually preserved in, in an oxygen hyperbaric chamber. But we don't want oxygen in the vault because we have too many cellulose-based films like Disney. And, you know, we want to have a low oxygen environment so they don't spontaneously combust. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just want, want you to know that all the lost episodes have been stored in a pure argon gas environment. Um, so, good. yeah, we're, we're going to be good. That would you be a good Jeff. place for us to all keep our poop knives. I, we're going straight into poop was, knives, huh? Honestly, we're going straight into that. poop knives. I skipped that story. I just knew it was going to be gross. I don't need to talk yeah. about poop knives. <laughs> you know, epoxy mixed with poop is terrible. It's yeah. not epoxy. No, it's a. Uh, it's just frozen. It's an old Inuit legend about an old man whose family wants him to stop hunting, so they take away all his tools, and he shows them up by going outside, taking a crap, making a knife out of the crap, killing a dog, building a sled out of the dog's rib cage, and going off onto the ice floes to hunt seals, even though his family thinks he's too old. But just like Thor, Zeus, and Jesus, it all turned out to be BS. Yep, turned out to be bullshit. I'm shocked, simply <laughs> shocked, that the poof knife story and the rib cage based sled wasn't real. Well, you know, we have science to thank for it now, so they figured it <laughs> you know, out. One of, my, one of my craft supply stores sells uh, pen blanks made out of cured poop, uh, and 
the mere idea of that like makes me so grossed out. Wait, wait, but the idea wait, of making wait. a pen for somebody made out of poop seems kind of awesome. I I have a question. So yeah. many. Uh, Mr. Malda, uh, a poop knife blank, a poop pen blank. That means you would put it on the lathe. And spin it at very high speeds. And, and then you would use that carving tool, right? And, yes, and tiny and, bits of it would flick out. And, a and it would send atomized poop into the air. Yeah. Into my breathable environment, my pure organic environment. That's a, that's a feature, is not a bug. Like a, is this like a poop transplant, a stool transplant? Is it medically approved poop? I hope it's not medically approved because I imagine that the uh, the FDA process to getting something like that approved is going to be really gross. Yeah, it's not that bad. No, they it's just got to sterilize it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's well, cured it's in resin, time. so I guess maybe it's not horrible, but it's horrible. Who? Who? I, okay. Maybe you don't know the answer to this question, but for as a matter of fact, we hope you don't. Who? Who says? You know what the world needs is a, a resin-filled poop pen. Like, like, is this like a market that we're just not- I mean, I can, answer, I can answer legitimately or I can try to make a joke. Amongst pen makers, they make weird blanks and that's a thing. The best pen. They, they embed anything that you can think of to embed in resin and turn into a pen, people do. They do tin foil, they do shredded money, they do antlers, they do sticks, they do... So what you're telling me is pen makers have a poor sense of boundaries in anything they can they want to make into a pen. I mean, Gross. I'm not, you know, disagreeing with any I of that. I can see why it's your Wait. hobby. Right. I do. I did. I, I took a picture this morning because I was cleaning out. I have, I have, I think 48 pens now. Yes, Chris. Just a point of personal privilege, your honor. Um, can, can you assert, for instance, that there is probably a pen out there, maybe in your basement that is made with, from a resin that contains the ashes of a dead relative, husband or pet? Oh, I do not have that, but I could absolutely do that. There's 100% chance yeah. that that has happened. Well, yeah, that I, happened. Actually, I would say 100% chance that all of those things you just named have happened yeah. many times over. It's like Although, people who make you know weird things from the ashes of their loved ones. I just totally. You know, you know the I, coolest I, one that I heard is a friend of uh, a friend of my wife's. Her husband died a few years ago, and they were like big world travelers. And she got his ashes, uh, and she takes like little tiny bits of his ashes with him wherever they get, wherever she goes, whenever she travels internationally and leaves them in weird places, which is- In case you're wondering how the zombie apocalypse will start, it'll it's be that. this lady sprinkling some in like Monaco. Yeah, right. it'll be. And she'll put some in, in some random kid's happy meal one day. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so Nate's not here. Being happy. Sprinkle, yeah. sprinkle, zombies. Sprinkle, sprinkle, little Joey. Nate's not here to talk about uh, his fancy chalk, but uh, I posted a really good article about uh, it's a survey of the blackboards of mathematicians. And it's actually just really neat to see like, you know, the different ways that uh, they're, uh, that they visually are expressing whatever it is they're thinking about. My favorite was the guy who mostly erased his and then just declined to have his name on the picture. <laughs> wow. Well, I, so uh... does this tie together with the last story because all the chalk's made from the ashes of a Fields Medal winner? Is that Probably. That yeah, if you want to get uh, MacArthur Genius Grant ashes, uh, those okay. those cost extra. You just use Stallman's hair, you know? Sorry. I'm sorry, it's GNU slash hair? GNU slash smelly hair. Uh, <laughs> uh, I really so, think his hair would be a fine oil brush. Ew. Ew. Uh -huh. no, it would, it would probably make a good off. shaving brush. Listen, poop pens aside, I, I'm, I'm, I'm easily nauseated by this discussion. Let, let's keep going. What else do we have? Goose game. Well, we've got, uh, we've got Area 51, uh, oh. which, which happened. It was a huge deal, and the whole internet was there. Like, a million people. Yeah, I know. I went there, and none of you guys showed up. I... I oh, I was I was on the left. You must have been on the right. Oh, that was you in the bikini. All right. Always. Okay. Wait, wait. Did anyone actually go? Yeah, I was Did there. You? I was dressed like a truck. 
<laughs> I was dressed like an Air no. one employee just trying to go to work. <laughs> I was dressed in military fatigues carrying a, a rifle and everybody left me alone. There I mostly couple... identify as a B2 bomber now, so that's how I appear. Yeah, What's your pronoun? Evident, <laughs> evidently, there were only a couple dozen people who showed up. Sadly. But the internet uh, uh, crowned a new deity in, for, in the form of the Naruto Runner Kid. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it kind of sucks for Keanu, because he got to be the deity since, uh, since E3. He was the king of the internet. But now, Naruto Runner Kid is the king of the internet. At least for another few days. I don't know. Oh, well, I thought it was the climate change girl. Oh, is Greta. it Greta's turn now? Yeah. She's pretty neat. I mean, I gotta give her mad props. I mean, that kid, she, she's a deep well of outrage. It's great. Yeah. The I scowling agree. gif is... Uh, oh, is so good. Yeah. yeah. So good. And I will give her props for actually getting up in front of the UN and saying, we are not going to forgive you. That is... <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's right. And all the UN people are like, yeah, so we're in charge. Right. We don't care. <laughs> right? The people in this room collectively are worth billions of dollars, and you had to have your flight donated. Yeah. Well, no, no. She, her flight, she didn't fly. She you know, paddled. Yeah. She paddled. She canoed. She canoe canoed. She has a Gnu. solar powered canoe. I'm sorry, that's canoe slash canoe. I already made that joke. You <laughs> literally, the, you were the third one to make the joke, Rob. I like that joke. It doesn't like you. All get credits. Uh, Borderlands 3. Am I Ooh. the only one who has played any of it so far? You're the I only person that has sold the Steam Epic. store. <laughs> no, it's the Epic store, right? Outside oh, the Epic store, the other one. I yeah. have all the stores. I have not played it yet. I haven't purchased it yet. Is it good? I heard hey, the writing. I like Borderlands 2. You know? It if you liked, but it is Borderlands 2. I thought the pre-sequel pre was kind of not as good, although it had some cool environments, like the low-gravity environments were fun, you know? Yep. It's probably really, along those lines. It's kind of like, same, I mean, it's Borderlands 2. Just here's more semi-story that goes along with it. But my what I heard, though, is that the writing is terrible. Well, the writing in Borderlands 2 and the, and the sequels were, were pretty fun, I have to tell you. You know, but it has not been. I, I've only played for probably an hour or so, and I will say this: like, even the jocular story, like, claptrap is more annoying now than funny. Is yeah. probably a good way to put it. So, I don't know. Yeah. Oh well. I don't know uh, the uh, the D and D storyline and and Borderlands Two. I was kind of a work of genius. You know? Yep. And I, I guess the like there's a YouTube streamer storyline in Borderlands Three, but it Ooh. sounds like there's some funny parts, but it's like there was you a lot like, of mystery. They had a YouTube streaming character in the Spider-Man game uh, for the PlayStation Four, and that character made me want to claw my eyes out. I Wait, hated it Flash? everything about Flash it. Flash is always streaming. Yeah, yeah uh, it was some girl. Ugh, it was awful. No. She's like, Roseboom is always streaming, remember? Yeah. Always streaming. Wait, what? Roseboom Rose is always streaming. Yeah. Oh, always be streaming. Yeah. ABS. IBS? Always, always streaming. Different. No, if you've got IBS, you can make poop knives. If you've got ABS, you can uh, make plastic. So I've got, uh, did you look at any of the pictures, uh, the 100,000 AI generated headshots? I yeah, looked I at a few of them. There's it's been creepy. a couple projects like that. I think they're pretty good, you know? It's creepy. Yeah. Yeah. I do like the idea that we're going to get to a point where, like, you'll just be able to generate, you know, I'll, I'll just generate 500 million faces and, you know, maybe this will be the actor that I want. I think it's actually, I look forward to these days, I have to be honest with you. It's like, you know, the idea of paying for extras when you can just, you know, plop them into place using a, like a whole move matching, you know, algorithm is wonderful to me, you know. Maybe not all of the ones in that. Uh, there, there's clearly some work to be done. I don't know. Like, you remember uh, the Lord of the Ring movies, they had the whole swarm algorithms for the orcs and, and for the sure. big armies. That was pretty cool stuff. Um, and like, if you merge that with like a completely 
Well, I mean, in their case, they were using computer generated org faces yeah. with their orgs, so whatever. But like, you know, you could save so much time dealing with extras. You know? I mean, they, they started that with the wildebeests and the Lion King, man. <laughs> and and they uh, came for the wildebeest, and so no one said anything. Then they um, came for Aladdin, and no one said anything. Then they came for the extras. Think, then they came for me, and there was no one left. Think how many extras lost a paycheck thanks to those wildebeests and the Lion King. No, no. It's worse than that, right? Because if you're an extra, apparently, I don't want to talk about how I know this. Um, you know, you get a you get like a third of a SAG card, and if you have three prominent extra showings you can get your 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 membership to the union which opens up more gigs for you right so right. uh you're and you're mad because you've only got two of three no I, I technically i think i could claim one um because i was a i was an extra in an episode of silicon valley yeah but that was like the back of your head and only if you had widescreen tv <laughs> only if you had a widescreen tv for like the 20th of a second that's enough apparently Cause like uh, when they, when they sat me down, like the guy who was sitting behind me is like, who do you know to get such a cool spot? And I'm like, Oh, uh, what? I'm like, you're creeping me out. You know, super classy. Uh, the, hey, I thought the rules, extras don't talk. <laughs> you know. Nog died. Oh, what? Nog. Yeah. Oh, this is so sad. So, uh, Jake, uh, Nog, uh, is of course the, the character played by what's his name? Aaron, Ehrenberg, Edinburgh? Yeah, Aaron Eisenberg. Uh, in Deep Space Nine, and uh, he apparently had uh, like a kidney disorder from birth, and he had two transplants over his life, and he and he was a good actor, and it was a good character, great character arc, you know. I, I loved Deep Space Nine, uh, unalloyed loved it, but he was, you know, he started being a very annoying character, but he turned into like the sweetest kind of character in the whole show, you know? I mean, both of the kids on that show, when they started yeah. off, they were really rough. Mm. And honestly, Cisco's kid, Jake, you know, he, yeah. uh, he kind of just became an annoying blogger. I mean, in all fairness, isn't that what happened to Will Wheaton? Well, no, but I mean, in the show, he basically <laughs> became an annoying blogger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you think that our Jake is Jake Cisco? That could be. Hey, Jake Cisco. Yeah. Star of Deep Space oh. Nine. Rapper. Uh, Let's see. Oh, uh, apparently there was a big leak out of Google. Uh, apparently uh, there was uh, something about quantum supremacy that has not actually been achieved because the article was wrong. I, I wouldn't know anything about it because an unpublished paper is not something I would ever comment on. Yeah. All right. But I will. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> actually, you know, Scott, Scott Aronson uh, wrote a really nice write-up on what it what it may or may not be as a paper. There was a good, it, yeah, I would go read that. There was that. a write up on, on Twitter too about, uh, and I don't remember who wrote it. Uh, I think I linked it on Taco Zone, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's not as impressive as the as the write up is. But of course, anybody who uh, you know uh, you know comments on Google, uh, whew, I can't imagine uh, what would happen uh, to those employees. <laughs> So there's a great uh, quantum physicist, uh, quantum computational physicist. His name is John Mattis. Uh, he came out of Santa Barbara and works for Google and, and now, and he's he's such a neat guy. And yeah, so I, that's all I'm going to say. But yeah, read Scott Aronson's article. We'll link to it in the description below. And uh, and yeah, it's really it's really a nice article. Paste uh, it into the Discord and then remind Jake to join our Discord. Oh, right. Join our Discord where things happen. Uh, let's see. I thought I had one other thing that I wanted to mention today. Uh, I don't think I did. Anybody else have something fun before we go about our separate ways? Um, there were some trailers posted during the Emmys. There's a lot of Zombieland stuff. Really? Oh, I didn't ask yeah. that. Yeah, no. But uh, there, what was it? It was so cool. Uh, let me just bring up on my history here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo. I, oh, El Camino. They had another Emmy trailer for that. You know, El Camino is the Breaking Bad movie thing. Yep. And then what else? 
Frozen 2? I don't care about that. If you guys care about Frozen 2, you can talk about Frozen 2. Dude, you know me. I'm I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm a sucker. Chris. I thought we already you... talked about the Frozen poop knives. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Frozen 2 is all about. Yeah. yeah. Right. Frozen 2, Elsa gets a knife. I'm going to cut you, Anna. No, that is not it at all. It's that Elsa decides she wants to become an independent woman, and she becomes a independent poop knife maker. And it's about her accepting, you know, not being a princess anymore. And I would have thought you would have read this already. No, she's and... going to open an Etsy store to sell her frozen poop knives. Chris, we have talked about giving Rob free reign to talk about Disney animated movies. And I thought you were on the same page. <laughs> but that isn't what we do anymore. You know... Uh, I, I, I agree, but that again, that was in one of the episodes you didn't upload. So <laughs> it is safely backed up. I would thank you to use yep. the terms correctly. Hey, hey, can I can I tell you something uh, about backed up videos? No one subscribes to them. No one sees them. Oh, that hurts. Like There's when so you came food. out in episode, you know what, two seventy three. You know, as a <laughs> uh, as a poly. Human. As a sapiosexual, because uh, Mark Ronson and I are hanging out together. Yeah. So what? What? What was? What is? Who? What? What was this whole story that was floating around yesterday? So like, Mark so, Ronson, I'm a or whatever. Mark Ronson, the who is Mark Ronson? First producer, of all, like, producer, music, 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 music kind of guy. Is he uptown folk? No, he is not. He, is he was in a BBC interview and was talking about how he's just attracted to brains, and then. Someone brought up sapiosexual, which he has now embraced, and yeah, it's ridiculous. The whole thing is ridiculous. I think I posted a great tweet from Mel Magazine about their takedown of sapiosexual, because the entire thing is just so, it's just so stupidly elitist. Although I think the best takedown I saw was, it's great to see how many girls under 30 Mark Ronson has found to be geniuses and to be attracted <laughs> to. Yeah. You know, I, 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 so I don't mean to be the stick in the mud, but I find so much like people are like, oh, journalism's dying, poor journalism. And I go, why do you have 2,000 people covering the Mark Ronson sapiosexual story? Like, I think we have too much capacity where it doesn't matter. But the reality is, so many people, it's all they want is celebrity crap. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I actually think it detracts from my enjoyment of the movies that they're in to know too much about them. Oh. You yeah. know, it's like, I want my minstrels concentrating on their singing, on their dancing, on their acting, on their being funny. I don't want to know about their personal lives. I don't want to be thinking, well, you know, that's the person, you know, it's like, and if they're a Nazi, if I don't know about it, I can still enjoy their shows, right? Well, I mean, but the second I, I got more about the Nazi, I'm like, Ugh. It, like, yeah, I can't watch Lethal Weapon without thinking, oh, yeah, there's the Nazi guy, you know? You should, uh, I, I know I, I, I preach about uh, The Good Place a lot, but that's actually kind of where they ended up in the latter half of the last season, that morality now has become too complicated and it's impossible to live a moral life because modern capitalism, essentially, no matter what happens, you're hurting somebody somewhere through your decisions. Right, and it's not that I want to live a life of ignorance, just I, I can be ignorant of, like, actors. I don't need to know about actors, you know? I just want to watch, yeah. like, Terminator Dark Fate, you know? I, I, you know, I just want to watch that without but, wondering but, if, what, you know, yeah. But what will happen to TMZ then? No one cares. <laughs> I can oh, say that. People care. Oh, really, <laughs> you are That's wrong. the whole point of your you argument. Have you not seen YouTube? My dead aunt wrote, she had a stack of those, like, tabloids. I mean, she was borderline hoarder, but like stacks of tabloids in her in her guest room, and I just remember sleeping there when I was a boy, and just like, like what is who what? And these were like not like even People Magazine like level quality. They were like News of the World, you know, Bat Boy stuff. And I'm like, I don't understand. Does George Clooney really have a bat growing from his left butt cheek? I you know I. You know, to be fair, Dude, I'd want to know if he did. did. Yeah. I don't care well, so much about his politics. Your enjoyment of the Ocean's Eleven series. But hey, Jake, a, we got homework for you. If he has a fruit bat growing out of his ass, I want to know that for sure. 
And what I want to know is, is the bat named Quato? Or would it be Quato if it's on his butt? Thank you. My work here is done. Mr. Mr. No, Quade. Slash Squato. Quade. Quade. Get me to the guano. Maybe that's where Randy Quaid went, you know, went off kilter. Oh. He should have been listening to Quato for advice. This is kind of old news, but I saw the new Predator movie and I liked it. What? I thought it was tolerable. I the thought, first half of it is absolutely first, watchable. The first half is actually pretty good. And then it gets a little it gets a little silly. <laughs> but, well, uh, it, it's, it is a little silly. And admittedly, Olivia Munn still can't act very well. Oh, no. But Sterling Brown can. Sterling Brown? Sterling Brown? Yeah. He can, you know, he Rob, can. And like uh, Boyd, the, the burly murderer guy, I mean, he he's he's a solid action guy. You know, I'm like, this is, I'm enjoying this. And, oh, I also saw Dark Phoenix, and it was indeed terrible. Like, it was okay, and then What's-Her-Name would come on screen, and it would just, like, suck the okay out of the, of the adjoining scenes. I, I think we can all agree that that movie sucks, and so does Sansa Stark. Yeah. Oh, God. It, it's funny because uh, in that movie, Sansa Stark and Jennifer Lawrence are like in a locked in a competition to be who is the worst actress. Uh, oh, and, and the only reason that I'm going to say that uh, Sansa Spoiler Stark is a better actress is because the movie gets, or she's the worst actress, because the movie gets worse after Jennifer Lawrence dies. And that's pretty amazing because Jennifer Lawrence oh, obviously spoil, hates every minute Spoiler of it. alert, Jake. Sorry about that, buddy. I, I can't said believe that Rob just is dropping these spoilers about the Dark Phoenix storyline, which I clearly have no idea about. Yeah, no. You don't got a big stack of Chris That's Claremont awesome. sitting around somewhere? No, I, not I, anymore, but... Yeah. The, the death of Jennifer Lawrence's character is almost as thrown off and unimportant as the death of Sterling Brown's character in The Predator. Ooh. Well, you know, what I started I watching. What recently, right? I felt that was the one thing I didn't like about the Predator. I felt that after building up Sterling Brown's role throughout the thing to off him in like a millisecond, and and you know, literally, they had to say later, "I can't believe they killed Sterling Brown's character." I mean, they practically had to say it because it was so hard to realize what was going on during that fight scene. You know, amongst all the cool killings and stuff from the Predator weapons. You know, and then he just gets pooped, you know, and it's like, dude, an hour and 30 minutes of Sterling being a great freaking actor, you know, and being a bad guy, you know, and not even showing up the scenes, just doing a good solid job as a bad guy. And you off him in like a 20th of a second in a single frame of the damn thing. And then it's like, that's that was uneven. So, Rob, I think his you recommended Rob McKinney? I, I didn't hear what you said. You recommended Letter Kenny to me. Yeah. And that show is freaking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've uh, never seen it. Slater Season King? Letter Kenny. Season three, as far as I'm concerned, is great. What uh, what is we it? We accidentally started on season six. So we watched oh. like two episodes of season six. And then I remembered you mm-hmm. saying mm-hmm. that it starts off a little slow. And I'm like, oh crap. So we went back to yeah. the beginning. And yeah, it's it's that show season six is like a they, that is a that is a writer's show, man. That is carefully scripted. Oh yeah. Well, yeah wait, season wait, three is a cartoon about and an anime. No, Letterkenny. Letterkenny uh, is Darian sort Brown? of a. It's a- sort of a trailer, a park, trailer park. Shut up. <laughs> Letterkenny <laughs> is a trailer park boys like uh, television show, except instead of in a Canadian trailer park, it's these Canadians who live in this little city called Letterkenny, and they're farmers. Oh. Uh, K. So Trevor Noah, who's comma, who's a pretty thanks. famous, who's a famous, pretty famous comedian, stars in it as one of uh, one of the characters. Uh, <laughs> really, really good writing, really solid main characters. The periphery characters, not so much, <laughs> uh, but the main squad is really good. Yeah, so and worth watching. The description below, so I can figure out how you spell it, because I thought you said letter, comma, Kenny, like. It's spelled a just like like a letter you would send and the name Kenny all mashed together. Letter Kenny. Which is which is Nunavut for oil underground in shale. Yeah, it's uh, the man who I founded the town was 
was a farmer named Letterkenny, according oh, to the I'm kind of amazed. I'm kind of amazed at how good it is. Yeah, it's really good. Like it's, yeah, I mean, we were kind of shocked because there's like all of these weird, really fast, really well framed shots with like weird lines being delivered, but really carefully scripted. Like Kathleen and I have a running thing when we're watching a show, you know, the, the sometimes you see a joke and you're like, that is an improv joke. And other times you see a joke and it's like, that is a joke that a writer really slaved over. And that show is just full of those moments where you're like, a writer really spent some time yeah. working out this monologue. And it's, it's really fast. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things you have to almost concentrate on getting all the jokes because the Canadian accents are so thick and, mm -hmm. and because <laughs> all the characters, you know, are like, you know, bumpkin farmers. So you don't expect it to be that way because everything's kind of slow, mm -hmm. but, but the comedy is really fast in it. Yeah. Ooh, now that, yeah. uh, uh, I mean that, that. I mean, I don't know that. There's only like what thirty episodes of it, so it's not that that big of a yeah. big of a thing. But I'm there's yeah, there's thrilled. six seasons. Each season is three hours long. Six episodes in each season. So wow, well, worth a watch if you hadn't seen it. Well, gentlemen, I'm gonna throw up the goodbye slide. Goodbye slide. Hello, goodbye, goodbye slide. slide. Should we all say goodbye to Jake? Bye, Jake. See you, Jake. I hope you have a good one, Jake. Uh, thanks for listening to episode 382 of Geeks in Space. I'm Rob Pander Taco Malda. Thank you to Chris, Jeff, Rob, uh, and Jake. Uh, join us next week where things will be mostly the same. Bye-bye. Or 